Hey everyone, in this video tutorial I'd like to take a look at cyclohexane and try and just understand the structure of it a little bit better. So remember when we're talking about cyclo compounds, that means that we're forming a ring. Hexane would mean six single bonded carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Now sometimes this structure can seem a little strange because carbon likes to have four bonds and in this case we're only seeing two. But remember that on each of these carbons here, we're going to have two hydrogens that are implied. So usually just to kind of make the structure not seem so messy, they will exclude them in textbooks um, just to kind of make it a little bit cleaner. But this is what it would overall look like. So now when I draw the structure in this particular kind of way, it's a top-down view. So when I look at it, I see the hexagon, and it's a little tempting to think that it might be a planar molecule, but the reality is it's not. And one way to convince yourself of that is to take a look at this carbon. And if you look at its hybridization, it's sp3 hybridized. Now remember, the shape associated with sp3 is tetrahedral. So what that would mean is if you took this and you were to rotate it and give it a flat appearance, it would actually have a zigzag topology. So this here would look more like this if it was put on its side. Now, in this way, we have some of our carbons that are going to be a little bit obscured. So usually we write it with a slight tilt. So let's take a look at what that slightly tilted molecule would look like. Okay, so now let's take a look at this tilted structure. So remember, previously what was happening is we looked at the same structure, it's just that we were peeking down and looking over on a top-down view, which made it look like just a regular hexagonal structure. And then what you could do is take this and tilt it 90 degrees and you'd get the side view. The problem with the side view is that some of your carbons are obscured and you can't see them, which is important when you're thinking about reactions. So what we do is we take that side view and we tilt it just a little bit so now we can see all of our carbons. And that's important because we want to understand the reactivity or the stability of our compound. Additionally, this kind of structure gives you a much better perspective of how the substituents or the things that are attached to each carbon are laid out in space. And that can tell you how reactive or non-reactive a compound may be and how stable a particular conformer is. So now, I just want to make a note that this here is the chair conformation of cyclohexane. There are other conformations, it's just that the chair tends to be the most stable for all of our cyclohexane structures. So these are some of the basic ideas you need to know to understand how you go from a cyclohexane hexagon down to this tilted structure that's got all of these peaks and valleys. 